Hi and welcome to Garden Angels. Now it is a great time to get outdoors, so you're going to love what we've got in store for you this week. I'm going to show you how to transform the garden into a medicine chest. So all of those plants to enhance your health and beauty. Beauty? Mm, beautiful. <laughs> and if you forget to water the garden, well, why not have a look at succulents? I'll be showing you a few of the best and they're great in pots and they're architectural. And if you're all going on a summer holiday, Fish. don't forget the garden because I've got lots of tips and tricks to make sure it's looking as good as when you left it. Yes. So all that and more on Garden Angels. Well, it's not just about the veggies here at Angels HQ. We can grow all different types of plants and I have named this plot to be the succulent plot, an arid landscape. Now, you're probably used to seeing succulents potted up in lovely old terracotta pots or even unusual containers, but rarely in the ground. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Turn a small section of perhaps your garden into a drought hardy architectural landscape. Now this is probably the type of agave that you're used to seeing. 70s style gardens, ever so popular, and this beautiful blue-green foliage. Now this is called agave attenuata, or the foxtail. It gets to about a metre or so across, so it's quite a big plant, but you can divide it. Now this is something a little bit more exciting that's on the market. It's called agave blue glow. It's smaller growing than the regular agave that you're probably used to seeing and it has the most amazing foliage texture. You've got this lovely deep blue green and then the outer margins or outer edges of these blades have a really lovely burgundy and the light shines through this and it creates an iridescent effect. Now succulents need absolute perfect drainage, otherwise they'll rot off. So I'm just getting a mattock and breaking up this existing soil and what I'm going to do is mound my beds. And this also creates interest and makes it more of a mini landscape. I'm using my own little concoction here. I've got some organic garden mix over here. Then I've brought in some river sand and even bigger particles in crushed sandstone, which will provide a little bit of nutrient but be perfectly free draining for our succulents. Now for all you uh, Lord of the Rings fans, this plant is actually called Gollum and it's a type of jade plant. One of those jade plants you used to have sitting at your front door because they're supposed to bring you loads of money into the house. Now it's not the same species that brings you loads of money, but it does add a ton of interest to the garden. Now of course this name Gollum is that really dark, ugly character out of Lord of the Rings and it has that appearance. It's quite ugly looking, but interesting and I love them. Now another plant that's come onto the market in the last few years is this fantastic one. It's a type of kalanchoe called flapjacks because it does kind of resemble pancakes. Well, that's what the Australian term is, of course. And the thing I like about this, it's going to be a really nice foliage contrast. It's got these beautiful, big, smooth leaves and these wonderful tinges of red. It's amazing what you can find at the side of Angel's headquarters. This is exactly what I need. A little bit of rock to set my mini landscape alive. And one of my favourite ground covers is in fact a succulent. It's this plant here. It's called Senechio serpens. It does actually sneak through your garden beds. It won't stay this small forever. Sometimes sold as chalk sticks because of this lovely fine dusting of colour on the outside of the leaves. Now watering in your plants is the perfect time to see how your drainage is working and I'm really happy with that. The water's getting away really quickly and that's because I've mounted the beds and added some really coarse aggregate and pebble into the mix. Now 
Now these specific succulents may not be available at your local nursery, but why not check out a specialist grower? I'm sure you'll find loads of succulents that you'll fall in love with. And of course, there you have it, the ultimate solution for that dry, hot area of your garden that you can't quite get the hose to. I love this time of the year, summer holidays. I've got the bikini, I've got the sarong, I'm dreaming of the beach, but before I pack, I've got to get outside because I've got to prepare my garden for the summer onslaught. The hot summer days really play havoc with the leafy greens. They're the first to bolt to seed and they wilt really easily too. So I want to rig up a temporary shade structure. You could use some shade cloth, an old beach umbrella. I'm just reusing my baby wraps. They had to come in handy someday. Newly planted seedlings need protection while you're away on holidays too. I've just got some more of the muslin and I'm going to put it on the western side because that's the strongest part of the sun. I really don't want my garden to be overrun with wandering dew when I get home, so I'm going to smother it with mulch. Now the trick here with mulch is just to apply four or five sheets of newspaper, nice and wet, so they stick down, smother the weed, and then what you do, you soak your sugarcane mulch into water, so when you apply it, it's nice and moist. That means it doesn't suck up moisture from the soil below and it conserves the soil moisture. I'm a little bit in love with my orchid collection. I think every good gardener needs an orchid collection, but they're the first things to dry out. So I'm going to try the up end bottle trick. Really, you'll get about one or two weeks worth of watering and just one hole in the top. The next step is to get all your potted plants and put them on the south side of the house. This is the cooler side of the house and it also means that when you get your neighbour to water them, they're all in one spot. Now you need lots of sauces as well, just to keep them nice and moist. Normally I don't like sauces because I think it keeps them too wet, but when you're off on holidays, it's the perfect thing. You want to give them a really good drink before you leave and fill those sauces right up with water and then ask your neighbour to water once a week. You can bring all your indoor plants into the bathroom. It's humid and moist in here and they just love it. Pop them down on some old towels, give them a drink and they'll thrive and be perfect there when you get home. Now you wouldn't do this with African violets or succulents, it's just too wet and they'll rot. ready to say bon voyage but I've got a few more jobs. Mow the lawn, you don't want the place looking unkept and if you're away for an extended period of time get a lawn mower man to keep it nice and trim and the last thing I like to do is just give the roses a little dead head because you know what in four or five weeks time they'll be flowering again to welcome you home. Let's face it your holiday is going to be much smoother if you're better organised so write down that list of all your jobs and if you need help go to the website. You know, plants have been used for thousands of years to help to promote health and well-being. And the good news is that there are still lots of plants that are just as useful today. So I'm going to show you how to turn your garden into your very own medicine chest. Now for medicinal purposes it's normally the English lavender that's used because of its high oil content and you can use both the fresh flowers or even the dried flowers to make an infused oil. Now if you do want to dry your flowers, a tip for you, just make sure you pick those flowers once they've just started to open and then form bunches and hang them upside down to dry. If there's no flowers around though you can still use the foliage although it's not quite as effective. But I find that the oil is fantastic if you can feel a migraine or a headache coming on, just simply rub lavender oil into your temples or around the back of your neck and it helps to ease that pressure. I also use it to help me sleep or even on little wounds to help them heal quicker. You 
know sage is a really old medicinal herb, but I know when I was a kid, I used to either drink the tea or gargle on sage tea when I had a sore throat or to help relieve the symptoms of tonsillitis. Now for thyme, you can use thyme for the same purpose. And the oil that's found in the leaves of thyme is actually strongly antiseptic. So you can either make a tea out of it or even chew on the fresh leaves when you've got a sore throat. You know, chilies are a really great source of vitamins A and C, so they're a great thing to have in the garden and of course the kitchen. But if you're one of these people that suffers from cold hands and feet all the time, they're really good for improving circulation. They can also help to aid digestion and help combat infection. So it's one of those things that when I travel, I always eat lots of chilies just to help keep those nasty tummy bugs away. And these days they even say chilies might speed up your metabolism. You know, aloe vera is a great plant to have in the garden. It's tough, it's attractive, it's got a really nice architectural form. But it's also a great one to have around if you've got any minor burns or sunburn because inside these thick fleshy leaves is magical sap. It's really easy to harvest. You just simply cut off a leaf, slice it down the centre, seal that wonderful sap inside. All you need to do is wipe that on the affected area. You can even use it on bites or stings just to help to relieve swelling. Now if you suffer from indigestion then this is a great plant to have in the garden, it's called lemon balm. It looks a little bit like mint but the leaves have this wonderful citrusy tang smell to them. You can make up a tea using the leaves and use it to aid digestion, you can also use it for nausea or bloating. And peppermint is another great one to have in the garden. Now peppermint is really good for indigestion, it helps to stimulate the digestive juices. You can even use it to help to relieve the symptoms of nervous tension or anxiety. Just bear in mind that it can be a little bit over-enthusiastic in the garden, so just make sure you grow it in a contained area or even in pots like I'm doing. So next time you get a headache or a tummy ache, go out into the garden and harvest from your very own medicine chest. If you want to add some colour to your outdoor space, why not think vertical with climbers? They're great for sprucing up an old tired fence line, giving you shade over your pergola, or even covering up an ugly old outhouse. And I have got five beauties that just flower their heads off. If you're a rose lover, you can't go past climbing roses for their heady fragrance and of course magnificent display. This one in particular is called Crepuscule and it's a really free flowering variety. It's got a really lovely orange that fades to an apricot flower. Now as much as you may want to prune these hard in late July after you've planted them, do hang off for the first couple of years. You really want these strong canes to develop and travel along the supports that you've made up. And if you simply must have a buttercup yellow David Austin climber, Graham Thomas is the one to get. Look at this, such wonderful blooms on really lovely canes. Now another very pretty climber that does really well in the cooler regions of Australia is the beautiful Clematis, or Clematis as some people say it. This one is just delightful. Just look at the blooms on it. It's called Etoile Violette. And believe it or not, when you plant these plants in the ground, they go down anything up to 24 inches. And that will ensure that the roots are getting as much coolness. And it'll also encourage a whole heap of shoots to come up and give you this beautiful, prolific growth. coverage that you're after. Look at this, Pandaria jasminoides, the bower of beauty. And we should be very proud of this plant. It's a beautiful Australian native. And just look at the coverage that you get on the fence line and the masses and masses of flower. Once you plant this plant after the first few weeks with a little bit of TLC, you don't have to do much to it at all. So, low maintenance, native, 
drought hardy, great flowers, you can't get better. Now another wonderful climber that is just covered in masses and masses of flowers in the warmer months would have to be the beautiful star jasmine. Chinese star jasmine, in fact, the scent of this, and you can imagine it on mass like this, is so beautiful, sweet and heady. Now, just because it's a climber doesn't mean you can't keep it under control. You can also have a floating hedge effect by trimming your top and bottom of your star jasmine, especially around a fence line, it looks great. And you can also use it as a sprawling ground cover. Well, it's hard to believe that such neglect can form beautiful flowers on a climber, but with the Bougainvillea, that is exactly what you get if you keep it in a hot, dry spot. Now, I must tell you, this is probably the most vigorous climber in our group. Because they are so vigorous, you need to have like a masonry structure like you've got here, a brick fence. And if you're going to use any sort of timber, use hardwood, please, because I've seen fences pulled over with this plant. Now, if the size of these plants are a little bit daunting, but you still want the benefits of those beautiful colours, why not look out for the Bambino range of Bougainvilliers? Ah, the good old days. The source of so much fun, the sprinkler, but not anymore. We've been forced to feel a little guilty as gardeners about using water in the garden, but we have to face a new reality. We need to be wise with water, but don't fear because I've got lots of great strategies to save water and have a fabulous garden. Now the easiest way to save water and the cheapest way is by using a trigger nozzle. Every hose should have one. The downside with this technique is, of course, you lose a little water to evaporation. One way to avoid that is to actually water underground. If you can afford a drip system, terrific. But another great technique is this water probe. Look at it. I think it's the best way to water big trees. Don't forget about your trees in dry periods. They really need a drink. If you've got a big tree with a tap root, the probe needs to go all the way in. But if you've got a shallow rooting tree like this camellia, just go in about a foot. Insert it into the soil, turn it on to auto, and away you go. Australian households waste so much grey water where really we should be recycling it and reusing it in the garden. I've been doing this for years in my laundry. It's called a water-wise system and reusing grey water, you just need to be mindful of a few important facts. The first one is what laundry detergent to use. I like to use a garden safe laundry detergent. This one's got no ammonia, no horrible petrochemicals and no phosphates, so it's garden friendly. There's too much water from each load of washing to go straight into the irrigation system. So that's why you need a water holding tank. The water comes through here, it gets filtered, then it slowly drips into your irrigation system and straight into the garden. The irrigation drippers are spaced every metre all the way down the driveway and they just let water out under the ground. So that's the grey water. But what about the clean, fresh water that you waste every day? Do you have my problem? I'm in the kitchen and it takes ages for the hot water tap to become hot. So I'm just doing a little experiment to see how long it takes and how much water I waste. Now that's 10 seconds. This is an eight litre bucket. So I've wasted six litres of fresh water whilst waiting for the hot water tap to get hot. Now that's a complete waste in my life and I found a really nifty device to save that water. It's called the Ecoverter and it's going to revolutionise our lives. Now the thing about this device is you will need somewhere to capture that water. Cue the water tank. And because every house is different, you might want one of these, you might want two, so you'll need a plumber as well. Some houses will be set up to allow all the hot water devices to run through one ecoverter, but mine isn't. My kitchen is the furthest from the hot water system, so it's got the longest dead leg and wastes the most water. So I'll divert all that water into a holding tank. Now the good thing about a water tank of this size, it's only 800 litres and it just needs a crusher dust bed. It doesn't need you to lay a concrete slab. 
I've done the maths, and if I use my kitchen hot tap six times a day, which is about right, at six litres a pop, well, that's a thousand litres a month. More than a tank full, and all I need to keep my garden happy. Well, that's if the Ecoverter works. So this is it, the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing actually works. Nothing, nothing. Ouch! Damn, happy days. Now this might look like an average suburban lawn, but what if I was to tell you that you could drive a fire truck in here every day and still have a lawn that the kids can roll around on? You know, this is a really typical scenario where you've got an inner city space that you need to be dual purpose. So in this case, the owners use this area almost like a driveway, so the cars come in and out. It's also a nice green space for the family. Now, ordinarily, all of that wear and tear and compaction would play havoc on the lawn. Now, you might not be able to tell, but underneath here is a really smart system that keeps the lawn looking this good, even with high traffic. Now this stuff is called turf pave and it's basically a series of interlocking cells that are made from recycled plastic. So that's old soft drink bottles and stuff. Now basically it just locks together very simply like Lego and it's really easy to install. All you do is put down a compacted layer of sand and gravel. Now the depth of that layer will depend on how heavy that traffic is you've got coming through. Then on top of that you lay your turf pave, then you fill it with soil and roll your turf out on top of it. Now each of these cells are specifically designed to protect the root system of the grass. And if you look closely, you can see these little grooves which are designed to allow the grass to creep through, providing good coverage even with compaction. Now while a system like this obviously makes turf very hard wearing, remember at the end of the day you're still dealing with a living, breathing grass. So that means you need the same type of care and maintenance. So for example, you might be able to get away with parking the car on the lawn for one day a week, but I wouldn't do it for too long because you'll end up shading out the grass and get lots of nasty patches. Now normally wheels turning frequently on a surface like this would do a lot of damage but the turf pave provides a nice stable base. Now for me the beauty of a system like this is that in the past a lot of people would have turned to pavers to solve a solution like this but now you can have a green, cooling, family friendly space that doubles as a living driveway. Well, it's been another huge show, girls, and I know that we tend to bombard you with so much information, so don't be overwhelmed. You can always pick up extra tips and tricks on the Garden Angels website. But next week is a really big huge. show. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's our Harvest Special. Harvest Special, and that means everyone gets to taste and feel and touch all those wonderful leafy greens and berries we've been growing throughout the whole season. And we'll be identifying lots of pests and diseases, so your questions are really going to test us. Yes, we're celebrating everything that Angels HQ here has to offer, so that's next week on Garden Angels! Angels.